Well, hello, traders and investors. L.A. Little here, founder of Neoclassical Technical Analysis, with your weekly review, May 28th. Uh, this is the report for the week ending. What do we got last week? Pretty much flat, other than gold. Gold led the pack on the way up. Still decent gains on the year. Gold almost back to break even. Bonds still getting beat up. Dollar slightly down on the year. Today we're going to shift attention a little bit, uh, a little bit away from the technicals, at least to start, and then we'll go to them. Um, we ought to talk about some economics because you know the big picture here, and I've provided a lot of links for you. The big picture here is that uh, you know at some point it is going to matter. It hasn't so far. What we have are unsustainable trends in terms of uh, the government debt, the Federal Reserve QE debt. Uh, and they're logarithmic at this point if you go off to these links and take a look at them we, We've been trying to solve a debt problem with more debt. That's not going to work And the main thing I brought this up for is that this is disinflationary Right because when you get into this debt trap, it's disinflationary GDP is going to suffer as a result of it over time uh, Just as it has over time uh, the last decade and we're going to see subpar GDP growth once this uh, surge uh, finishes up. What we're also seeing though is inflation and it's getting all the press right now. The CPI is moving higher if you if you look at the shadow statistics from uh, um, their website you can see that the alternative inflation numbers are even higher. Uh, they're all showing inflation and the question everybody's asking is is it going to take off you know, are we going to see this runaway inflation? And as I've said before, it, it probably isn't going to happen unless we get wage push inflation. But when you look at the unemployment rate, it seems unlikely that that's going to happen. More than likely, with the debt trap and the, the unemployment rate as it is, we're probably not going to get a runaway of inflation. So, you know, what we have instead is we have this situation where uh, the market has been moving up on inflation. Um, market being gold and some of these other things and essentially you know we're going up like this on inflation expectations and at some point that's going to probably level out and come back down now how far it comes back down how far it goes up to start with you know that's a question we don't really know but is it going to just keep rising to the moon I think that's very doubtful more than likely that's not going to be the case and so if that's true, if they don't stick long uh, short term, they probably will stick. Um, but in the long term, right, it's going to be a big problem um, in that I don't know how you're going to solve this debt issue. If we look at it from a different perspective, you know, big picture, and that's risk. Where are the risks? And I kind of named three of them here that, that stand out to me. Geopolitical blow up, you know, where something major happens geopolitically. The stagflation fears uh, could cause a problem, and that may be part and parcel of the Fed move that, that happens. So let's just quickly look at each one geopolitically. You know, when an economic pie contracts around the world, and the COVID shutdowns led to that, that increases tension. And we've got an increasingly polarized world as a, revolt, a result of that. And so all of that, you know, just increases the possibility of something going wrong geopolitically that's potentially a big problem. So far, it hasn't been a problem, and it doesn't matter until it is, but it is something to continue to you know keep on your radar. Stagflation, and I it just kind of talked about that above, but essentially is the fears are great, and they're getting greater, and they're probably gonna continue for a while, I would think for another few months. And as those numbers keep going up, as those, uh, uh, supply uh, side, uh, you know, constraints uh, and disruptions continue. Uh, we're going to start seeing probably on the other side economic disappointments. We just saw China start tapping on the bank or the brakes here. Uh, uh, just uh, I think it was like two weeks ago. We've been seeing some revisions lower and expectations not being met on some of these economic numbers. Uh, the biggest example. Uh, was the unemployment number um, a month ago. Of course, that was written off, but if you look at PMI numbers and some of the others, they keep getting revised lower. And so I think, you know, if, if you think about it and you say, hey, inflation's rising, 
and we're not getting economic numbers surprising to the upside, but to the downside, that's stagflation. And that, I think, is going to continue to be a worry for the near term. And when I say near term, I'm talking about the next few months. And maybe that will, you know, eventually go away. I think it actually will go away to some degree. But I think that uh, it's going to be with us for some while because I believe economically, once this boom is over, right, this re putting everything, reopening back to work, once that's over, you know, it's going to, the, the, the GDP is going to resolve back down to that 2% range it was in before. And if inflation, you know, comes up, comes down, and then holds up here somewhere around 3% or something, this is going to be a big issue. And so stagflation, even though I don't think it's going to be at the levels people are thinking, like the 70s, I think there will be an issue uh, and will drag on the economy and uh, the psyches of investors. The biggest problem may be a Fed mistake and because they're starting to talk about tapering. You know, they're talking about the talking about tapering. Uh, before they said they never would, now they are. If they do start to taper, and I think the MBS portion of the QE would be where they do it, uh, given what's happening in the housing prices, that is going to be probably a shock to the market unless they can set the stage without rushing into a decision and get people on board. So that's kind of my take on the economic side, on the big picture side. And I think it's important every now and then to at least think about that. You know, I do know that this is about technicals and my expertise is with the neoclassical technicals. But economics, you know, in the end, in the long run, it's about economics, right? That's what drives these technicals. And so we have to at least, you know, theorize about what's happening and be aware of it and then see if these things start to support whatever it is we're thinking over here. So moving to the technical side, at least for now, you know, what do we see, right? And if you think about those things we were just talking about, and if you're worried about a crash, it's not probably going to happen unless this happens. And so if we just keep focusing on the charts and we look for multiple swing point time frame break, breakdowns on the weekly, which is what these charts are. In other words, if you come down here and you start wiping out these lows, in other words, those on the NASDAQ, and if we look elsewhere here on the, the NASDAQ 100, the NDX, on the Russell 2000, all those are range bound, and they all have multiple swing points located at the back side of them. If we were to turn and come down and start blowing these away, especially if we were to turn, come down, hesitate in here for a while, and then push through, that is a big problem. And that is something we have to be aware of. Right now, it's not an issue. Could be, but it's not. What's the issue now? Top side. S&P is trying to break out. Now, mind you, as I've said before, I suspect when it does, if it does, it's going to be a nominal new breakout. In other words, it's going to go up and it's going to come right back and it's going to test. And we'll see whether that holds or not. I don't expect this to just leg higher, at least not off the bat, right? Some sort of a, a push up, nominal new highs, and get pulled back in. And probably get pulled back in because these won't break out. And, um, you know, if that's the case, whether it's this week, next week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, you know, that's a positive thing in that you get one of them, but you can need all of them to do it. You need all the indexes to start doing that. And if you look at just how bullish it is right now and look at something like volatility, right, the VXX or the VIX in this case, you know, we we had maintained since the, the uh, 2021, or excuse me, 2020 crash, a level of about 20 as the lows on the VIX. Well, they got under it, tried to get back above it. Now they're back under it again. This to me looks like the dividing line. You know, this, this is kind of a range up here. And there's a range down here. And if you look longer term, you do go as low as about 10 or 11. 
And so the VIX itself, the volatility index, is telling us that uh, there's more and more expectation, here's the monthly, that uh, this is not going to, uh, that this market is not going to crash. Otherwise, they'd, they'd be taking out insurance puts. And so if you look at that, right, there's about that 20 level there. We're under it. You can get down around the 10, 12, which is what we were just saying. This may be where it's heading. Volatility is telling us this market's not going to crash anytime soon. What else can we look at? Well, one of the things I look at, and it's, that's uh, unique to neoclassical, is this idea of, of MTTF. You know, a trend comes into existence. You know, so you get a trend on, on any instrument you're looking at. And when it comes into, trend, uh, into existence, it has some sort of a life cycle. You know, it goes up, and eventually it turns and turns into some other something, right? Either down or sideways, if it was bullish. And so as a trend becomes bullish, it goes for a while, and we can measure the length of these things, and that's the MTTF. So if we're looking at the length of these and looking at uh, the various market sectors and the weighting on those sectors, what you'll notice is about 70% of those are going to become stretched in the September-October time frame, and quite stretched, actually. And if that's true, right, that means they're going to have a lot of risk in that time frame. And so that is something we can look at and say, you know what? You know, looking out on the horizon, we may be fairly safe until we get into the September time frame. Uh, at least the MTTFs aren't telling us that anything's imminent. What is imminent? Well, there's a few of these that are imminent now, like basic materials. Right? This plays back into what we were just talking about above. Um, these have been on a run. And they're getting extended, right? Very extended on the short term and starting to get extended on the intermediate term time frame. What else is extended? Well, these are sideways and they're not extended out here. If these were to, to turn bullish reasonably soon, then what would happen is about seven, eight weeks from now, they turn bullish, they'd run their MTTFs and they'd start getting extended. And that will be around the September time frame. So you'll end up with extensions here and extensions here on these at the same time. Assuming this flips and comes back and does the same thing, it would be set up the same way. Those are the big uh, three. Uh, communications is another one. You can see it's 53. It's one now. That one will be extended in that time frame. Finally, healthcare would have to do the same thing. Financials, flip around, come back and they'd both be extended. So in other words, if those things happen the way I just described them, we're going to have problems potentially in that September, October time frame. What else can we look at? Well, we know that precious metals have had big run. And we've been looking to participate in this if it you know, takes off. This is the monthly. It's in this range. It's been in this range now for going on a year. Had a, had a big range, long consolidation after a big run-up. Now it does another run-up, and now the question is, is, is this going to consolidate longer, or has it consolidated long enough and going to take off again? A lot of this depends on what happens with other markets. If we look at, for example, the dollar, the core inverse correlation uh, with the precious metals, uh, again, these are monthly time frames. What we see, it, it, I mean, it's not perfect, but there is a correlation. So if we look at that and um, pull this back, so let's start here. So if we go from 2017 up to about mid-2019, the dollar goes down, goes up, and if we go back to that same time period here, well, we kind of saw the same movement, but nothing big, right? This was still consolidating. But this breaks out in the uh, summer of 2019 and makes a run. And if we go to the summer of 2019, the dollar had topped out. It does get a spike up here in that September, uh, November, that's 2020. That's uh, the March 2020 when we had the, the crash. But it topped out, and then the dollar began to depreciate. And during that depreciation, this was making its run higher. 
and now it's consolidating as the dollar is kind of consolidating here. If the dollar were to break lower, that probably is going to help the gold market. Now it could be that the dollar just gyrates and the gold market takes off anyway. It's not a perfect correlation. Uh, but in general, a weaker dollar tends to help the gold market. Interest rates. If we look at interest rates, that same period of consolidation that we saw on gold, we see here. And when the interest rates, uh, which are inverse to the treasury bond, the long-term bond here, when the treasury bond starts going up, interest rates are falling. Well, when the interest rates fell, gold took off. Now that gold is consolidating, interest rates have gone back up. If the interest rates, if this were to turn and start back up, in other words, if money was to leave the equity markets and head over to the bonds, that would push rates back down. That would be kind of a fear thing. And if so, gold would probably be a beneficiary of that. So I still like this gold market. I've been talking about it for quite a while now, and I thought it would be worthwhile to show it as is still a good reason to be um, bullish on that market. So what's the bottom line here? Short-term time frame, there's more work to do. The S&P may make nominal new highs, but to get another leg higher, right, you're going you're gonna to have to get the other uh, indexes to come in and support it. And, and I just don't know if that's going to happen right now. It's possible, but if we look at, you know, how far things have ran, the stocks that, are, that, that participated in the run, we had a, a record number of stocks participating. The, the stocks that are, are consolidating and correcting, right? All of these things, um, you know, they, they're not huge negatives, but they're somewhat negatives. Sure, it could happen, uh, but I think you're going to have to get those other indexes to take off. And if we don't see those other indexes take off, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. I do think when we get out to September, October, there's going to be some concern about what's going to happen. And I would be careful when we get out there, and I will be careful in advising you of that as we approach that period of time. Finally, trading plan, pretty flat last week. Really not a lot to talk about here. We're still holding on to commodities mostly uh, because I think that's where you need to be. I do think that if you're in the uh, industrial metals, uh, maybe even the oil market, I think those are getting a little dangerous now. I think they're going to consolidate, so I wouldn't be uh, trying to push positions there. Fundamentally and politically, uh, a lot of a lot of. Um, comments here, but, but generally it comes down to uh, the economic data this week. Uh, we're going to have some more Fed speakers. We're going to have the chairman actually speak out. There's a Beige book that comes out uh, that may show some extreme weakness or strength. If, if that's true, it'll have an impact. Same with the employment numbers on Friday. But more than likely, if anything, it will be some you know, words coming from these speakers that may influence things. More than likely, these don't do anything. Right now, all news is still good news. At some point, that's going to change. Uh, but, you know, even when it does, they're going to probably come in and support the market. Uh, and, you know, if you get a 10, 15, 20% drop, they're going to run in there and support it. And so, ideally, you want to buy that if it happens. And, they're, you know, technically, if you look at it, there's a good reason to buy it as well. But uh, until we start moving down, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, what the market is really focused on, if we look at the infrastructure stuff, because this is the uh, hot topic right now, uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about, you know, see the $6 trillion number. Well, I don't think this means much, you know, the budget. What means something is this infrastructure. Right now they're talking about 1.6. The Republicans are, Biden's still talking about, I think, 2 point. You know, I think I think the Republicans are 1.6, 2 point something. Or, or maybe this is Biden. Biden's at 1.6. The Republicans at 1.2 is the latest. Um, whatever the deal is, you know, the question is going to be is, you know, when are they going to pass it? How fast is the money going to get spent? And where's it going to come from? If these are negatives here, right, if these end up being negatives, uh, then that is going to impact the usefulness of it in terms of market impact. 
holiday shortened week and prognostications uh, last week were pretty much pegged at uh, this week I don't expect much I think we're going to be flat again uh, we could dip down into this support area down here and then bounce off best case you break the swing point high and you leg up a little bit but I kind of doubt that I think the likely case is you may get a nominal new high I didn't show it here but we may actually get a new high and then come back down some but I don't think we're going anywhere fast that's it for this week, folks. Have a great one. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.